there's nothing quite like a handmade gift. So today we're going to make some basic wooden picture frames that even a complete beginner could do. So the first thing we need to do is make our rail material, which will be the size of our frame. The width of your rails is an entirely aesthetic decision, so you can cut this to whatever width you want or use an existing pre-cut dimension to make your life a little bit easier. Um, I've gone with inch and five eighths here. The hardest part in making a frame is going to be cutting the rabbit on the inside of your rails, which holds the glass and the art. If someone doesn't have too many tools or is a beginner woodworker, that can be a challenge. So with a little trick, we're actually going to bypass cutting a rabbit completely. So right now, all we have to do is pre-mark the width of that space that we want. So I have my rolling marking gauge here set to about 3 sixteenths. I'm going to mark the inside edge along the whole length of the board. And you can do the same thing with the scribe on the odd job. You can also use the odd job to make a pencil line, which will do the same thing. So this is going to serve as the width of our recess, but with this technique, we're going to do that after we glue the sides of the frame together. With a hand plane, I'm going to add a little chamfer to what will be the inside of my rails. Okay, now we can start laying out our rails. Start with a 45 degree angle. My glass sit within this space created by this line. I have to measure on the line and not on the edge. This frame is going to be a 4 by 6 but instead of just going to 4 inches, I'm going to give myself a little bit of space. 4 and an eighth. That will give me a sixteenth of an inch on either end for a little wiggle room. Another 45. All right, so I'll lay out the other sides the same way. One nice thing about the odd job is you can do 45s in either direction very easily. Okay, so with the short and the long rail laid out, we can cut them out. Now I could just go and freehand cut these 45s with the saw, but it's gonna be pretty hard to make those all consistent and accurate. What I'm gonna do is make a quick miter box for my saw. I uh, went ahead and added some screws for strength, and then I screwed it right to my workbench. And now I've got a place to make my cuts. Now the pieces I cut out become my template for my other sides. And if your cuts aren't perfect, you can clean them up a little bit on some sandpaper that's glued to a flat piece of wood. Another great trick is to stack your rails so you can cut your sides at the same time, ensuring that they're exactly the same length. Now you could just use masking tape as clamps, but I'm going to use this handy picture frame clamp, which is very convenient because you can see the actual joint while you're clamping. See how it's coming together. Nice and square. Now of course, we're going to use the best trick in woodworking, which is to put a little sawdust in your joint. Alright, so the rails are glued together. Now we're going to flip it over. And here is where we're going to do our little trick. I've cut out some thin material, 5 sixteenths thick, quarter inch or 3 sixteenths even would work fine. And so I'm just going to frame that little line that we made earlier. I'm going to glue those down and that will form the recess of our frame. It will also overlap our joint here and add a little bit of strength. All right, you can see how these backing pieces cross over the miter and add a lot of strength to this joint. You can even go and add some short nails here for extra strength. Alternatively, you can use what's called a V-nail, which goes across the miter and allows for movement in the wood. Now that the frames are all glued up, we can add some further customization. You can play around with different materials and designs. You can also try carving a design.
You can just back your art with a piece of cardboard. And to hold everything in, we'll use what's called a glacier point. Just use the tip of a screwdriver and a mallet to lightly tap them in. So it's really that simple. And as you can see, there's a million different ways to customize this project and put your own spin on it. Add some art or a favorite photograph and you have a perfect gift. So thanks for watching. I hope you try this project out for yourself. Have some fun and make some unique gifts.